some, the Olympic trials may be the beginning. For Tim Daggett, it may be the end. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Tim, was there a specific moment when you felt like you re-injured your leg out there? Well, right from the start today on floor exercise, my leg was really, really sore. And uh, there are certain days I have good days and certain days that are, are real bad. And today my leg was was real sore right from the start. We had to, we had to change our plan right from the beginning. I couldn't do what I had hoped to do. And... Uh, Jim, you said before this competition that even if you didn't make the Olympic team, that you would feel like you had triumphed. Are you still able to hold on to that feeling right now? Well, you know, it's my dream to to go on and go to 1988 Olympic Games, but uh, it just uh, it, it doesn't look like it's going to work out that way. And you know, I right from the start, the odds were way against me, and and I knew that, and I recognized that, and. It really was the struggle, you know. That's 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 what they, that's what the Olympic creed is all about. The struggle is the most important thing, and I think I did everything in my power. Well, you certainly triumphed in that struggle, Tim. Will you retire? Is this your last gymnastics competition? Well, it's, you know, it's really hard to say right at this point. I'm feeling so many different things, but uh, it's probably my last meet. You know, I've I've come a long way, but. Uh, my body is is pretty old right now and it's uh it's pretty beat up and you know i think i can go out a champion right now I, i'm not going to be an olympian i think i'm a champion to paraphrase that olympic creed the most important thing in life is not the triumph but the struggle and everyone in the salt palace knows of the triumph and the struggle but only Tim Daggett knows to what degree the triumph was important and the struggle was difficult. Now, the emotions working here are quite obvious in their intention, but the emotions working here are a little bit more subtle. What does Dan Hayden, who was the national champion just a few weeks ago, what does he feel like? And brother Dennis, who is quickly moving out of contention for a spot on the team. How about Charles Lakes? who is on the verge of becoming the first black gymnast to represent this country in the Olympics. And Scott Johnson, who's performing as if his hand was never broken. Then there's the graduate of Nebraska, Wes Souter, who's trying desperately to hang on to one of the last couple of spots available for this team. Now we move to the next trio of apparatus, the highlight of which, without a doubt, is the high bar. This dramatic event is staged on an apparatus that is eight feet high, eight feet across, and at an inch and an eighth, the bar is slightly larger than a roll of quarters. About to grab that cold steel bar now is Wes Souter, 24 years old, a graduate of Nebraska, who is precariously sitting in sixth place, if you include Scott Johnson, who will be performing behind him on the parallel bars. Well, one of the requirements on high bar is a release move, and it's coming up right here. There it is, a flyaway, reach around, re-grasp. You see Johnson's routine is underway in the background. Souter the 1985 NCAA champion and since that moment has been trying to live up to that awful word known as potential. Come on, Here comes Wes's dismount. It's a triple flyaway, a very difficult dismount. Oh. Terrific. He can afford a few mistakes, Gordon, and I didn't see many. Little hop on the end. But Wes Suter, one of many Nebraska Cornhuskers, past, present, and future, who are doing well here in Salt Lake City. All right, let's watch his release move now. The trick on a release move, of course, is to let loose at just the right angle so that it takes you back into the bar. He'll do one more one-arm giant. Now he has to release it at just greater than a 45-degree angle. There. That puts him at a just arm's length from the bar. All right, now let's take another look at a triple flyaway. Now watch how high he gets. He'll be over a full body length above the bar. Oh, that's dynamite. Now, Suter receives a 9.80 for that routine. Now, here's the man sitting right in front of Wes Suter, Dominic Minacucci, only 19 years of age, from Staten Island, New York, and a sophomore at Illinois. On the high bar of the compulsories, he received a 9.65. He'll need to do better than that to stay in front of Wes Suter. He's staggering just a little bit. He's just had a, a little trouble on every move he's tried. Here's his release move. Takes it in a little bit too close to the bar, which is safe, but not pretty.
Scott Johnson's score on the parallel bars is a 9-7-0. That should allow him to hold his position. And now Minicucci is setting up for his dismount, a full twisting double flyaway. And now he's happy to have that one behind him. Just a few chances remain for all concerned as Coca-Cola presents the Olympic trial. I'm Al Troutwig along with Gordon Maddox and Becky Dixon as we move to the final rotation, the last event, the last chance for all the gymnasts concerned. Scott Johnson will be the next performer we watch. On the vault, he needs to avoid a major mistake, and a place on the Olympic team is his. Well, Al, I think Scotty's goal tonight was just to be consistent, and he's done six very usable routines, and I think he's happy with it. Happy with it. He's heading right up into the stands, and there is his wife, Lori, and his mother, and a victory hug. Scott has said all along he needs not to win here, but simply to finish in the top six. He has done much better than that. He very well could finish in first. Now the pressure shifts to those who sit on the bubble, like Dominic Minicucci. Now, assuming Johnson finishes above all these men, Lance Ringnald in fifth, Wes Suter in sixth, Dominic Minicucci, and Tom Schlesinger all don't know exactly whether they will have a position or not on the U.S. Olympic team. They will know after this one last chance. Well, Dominic, now one of the youngsters on this team has to do one thing. He has to avoid giving away those precious tenths of a point. So we'll watch this routine with that in mind. So far, clean. He has no press to a handstand in this routine, which is just fine. It's not required. Most gymnasts, however, do that. Now, here comes the dismount. Well, while it's low, I think Dominic will still be very happy with that dismount. Yes, I think you could say that. Staten Island may be known for many things in New York City. The Staten Island Expressway, some rolling hills, a farm or two, but it is not known for producing gymnasts. Dominic Minicucci thinks perhaps that he has given it his best shot and may just be good enough to go to Seoul. To another story, Tom Schlesinger. In 1987, while performing for Nebraska, the NCAA champion, but never since then, Gordon, really as smooth as he was when he won that championship, and he is right on the edge, as was Minicucci. And boy, he's been tense throughout this entire competition. Here comes his full twisting Sukihara. Aha! <laughs> Interesting to watch the great smiles explode on their face. In front of his father and his brother who was paralyzed in this sport, Tom Schlesinger delivers a very critical vault. Takes it up nice and high, spots the mat, and makes an excellent landing. Now Schlesinger's score is a 9.55, which is not better than the 9.65 of Dominic Minicucci, which was awarded just moments ago, so Schlesinger picks up no ground. Now, Lance Ringnold, another teenager right in the middle of this on-the-bubble story. 18 years of age, a freshman, another performer from Nebraska. And he'll be showing you a common world-class vault, different style. Watch this now. His legs are going to be in the straddle position. And except for that big hop, it's done very well. And he may be the youngest man to make the U.S. Gymnastic Olympic team since Steve Hug who was 17 at the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico City. Now let's watch his style again. Gets it up reasonably high. Notice how far apart his legs are. He just over-rotates it a little bit and has to take that giant hop. A 9-6 for Ringnald, and we believe a spot on the team. As the bubble story continues, let's get this report filed earlier by Becky Dixon. With me now, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Lakes and the rest of the Great Lakes Charles Lakes Fan Club. And Mr. Lakes... You all look so calm and cool on the outside. I want to know what's going on inside. Maybe a few butterflies? Well, quite a few butterflies as far as I'm concerned. It's really tough competition right now. Mrs. Lakes, when did you first realize that Charles had the potential to become an Olympic gymnast? I've always known him. I always knew he would be an 